Hello everyone. I wanted to share with you today some of the things that God has been speaking to me about. You know, in the prayer meeting we pray and we get into the Spirit and God shows us things. And just lately, uh, you know, I've been seeing the, the, the presence of God building like a tropical storm cloud. Yeah, we have wonderful prayer meetings and we've been praying for our nation and praying for a move of God. And I see this tropical storm cloud building and building and building and building and the presence of God building, ready to pour out on our nation. And when a tropical storm breaks forth, it's like tipping a bucket out and the presence of God falls. And that's what I believe is going to happen. And in a tropical storm, when it rains, everything gets wet. And nobody can say that it's not raining. It pours out so tremendously and so powerfully. And I believe that's what's going to happen to our nation and the nations of the world. That when God pours out, nobody can say that God is not moving. I believe that we're in for such a glorious time ahead as we keep our eyes focused on what God is going to do. You know, in these times, it seems like God is working so powerfully. But when the Spirit of God comes... When the Spirit of God comes, friends, when the Spirit comes, we've got to be ready to walk with Him and to move with Him and do what He wants to do. I, I, you know, I was reading in uh, uh, Revelations, and it talks about the seven churches and the seven spirits of God. And I thought, what is that? What are the seven spirits of God? And, you know, uh, I, I found a verse that described the seven spirits of God. And really, I just believe there's seven different aspects, in my thinking anyway. They're just seven different aspects of who God is, of the Spirit of God. In Isaiah, let me find it here for you. In Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2, it says, it says The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Prophesying about Jesus, of course. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Different aspects of the Spirit of God. When God comes, friends, God is going to move and change and touch our nation. We're believing for that so very, very powerfully. Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me and he has anointed me. And he is, it was his first declaration, really, of who he was and what he was about to do. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. That's the Spirit of the Lord. The, the word Lord there is the name of God, Jehovah, which means eternal one, the almighty one. And that's what happens when the Spirit of God comes. All these things happen. The, the blind have their sight restored to them. Those that are bound are set free. God wants to set us free and bring liberty. That's what happens when the Spirit of God comes. When the Spirit comes, friends, we've got to be prepared to move with Him because I believe He's moving now. And I just want to break open this a little bit so we understand who the Spirit of God really is. Jesus said, I can do nothing of myself. What he did, he did by the power of the Spirit. He did by the life of the Spirit. He said, you know, I don't do anything of myself, but I do what the Father shows me. I do, God is greater than me, Jesus said. And I do what he shows me by the power of the Spirit. We have that same Spirit. The Spirit of God is so wonderful. He is so marvelous and mighty and full of power. But there are times, friends, when it seems like when God pours out of his spirit, there, there, there is a greater dimension, a greater awareness, a greater aspect of his spirit that comes. And I want to show you a few of these things. <clears throat> Jesus said that the spirit of the Lord is upon me, the eternal one, and, and that the spirit of wisdom comes. The word wisdom in the, in the Greek is chokma. The first mention of the spirit of wisdom was upon Bezalel, I think I got his name right, and Holiab to build the temple. And it's in Exodus. He says, he, Exodus says, I have filled them with the spirit of wisdom 
and in understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship. They had the spirit of wisdom to build. There's a verse that says in Proverbs 14, wisdom builds the house. And really wisdom is knowing what to do in these times, knowing how to build. Wisdom builds. These were workmen and they had a spirit of wisdom. This is more than just a skill, friends. It's knowing how. It's knowing how to work with God. The spirit of wisdom. We need the spirit of wisdom now as much as ever. We need God to come by his spirit and empower us with wisdom to know how to walk with him. Because I believe God is realigning some things in the church. He's certainly realigning some things in the natural. What we are seeing in the nations of the world is the real birth pains and birth pangs of this great awakening that's coming upon us. And we need the wisdom of God to be able to walk with him. King Solomon could have asked for riches, he could have asked for victory over his enemies, he could have asked for all these things, but he asked for wisdom. And God was very pleased with that. And because God gave him wisdom, he had riches, he had wealth, he had all these things that God gave to him because of the wisdom, to the point where the nations around about were astonished at his wisdom. And the Queen of Sheba went to visit him to understand his wisdom. To get wisdom is better than gold, and to get understanding is to be chosen rather than silver. That's Proverbs 16, verse 16. Friends, when God comes in wisdom, then we can build and do what God wants to build, because I believe he's building something incredible on the earth today. The spirit of wisdom, when he comes, we need to walk in the spirit of wisdom. The spirit of counsel and might. The word counsel in the Hebrew is etza, to counsel, to give advice, to have purpose. It's to know what to do. Similar to wisdom, it's to give good counsel. In 1 Chronicles 12, verse 32, the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. We need to be like the men of Issachar with good counsel to help people, others and ourselves to know what to do in these times. We need the spirit of counsel to come and help us. The spirit of might, the word in the Hebrew is Gevera, which means the mighty deeds of God, power, strength. The whole Bible really is a record of the mighty deeds of God. In Chronicles, we have that word repeated when it says, these are the mighty deeds of the men of Israel. Again and again and again, it talks about the mighty deeds of these men. But God has always performed mighty deeds. He is a God of might and power. Nothing is too difficult for God. All things are possible to him who believes. We're the ones that are supposed to believe with him and walk with him and see the mighty deeds of God come forth. At our last prayer meeting, uh, Neil was leading us and said he is believing for supernatural deeds, for things that are not just healings and miracles, but out-of-the-box stuff. And I believe that is what God is wanting to do. Stuff that is not just your normal, everyday church, but out of the box. Ways that God will move so powerfully. And I remember a time I was riding my motorcycle and I got a fistful of front brake and I spat me off the front. And over I went and landed on my head and all my body. The bike came along and landed on the top of me and I felt all my ribs break. And it just went pop, pop, pop. I felt my ribs and I thought, how am I going to function? I was pastoring a church. I had to preach several times a week. How am I going to? And I began to pray in tongues at the top of my voice while I was rolling around on the ground. Somebody came along and picked up the motorcycle off me and I'm rolling around holding my broken ribs, praying in tongues at the top of my voice. Oh, And really I was praying that God would heal my ribs. 
and I felt the presence of God come upon me. And I felt my ribs go pop, 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 instantly healed. Mighty deeds of God. And I began to laugh because the presence of God felt so wonderful. So then I was rolling around on the ground laughing. And all those people that were with me must have thought I was crazy because I wasn't worried about anything anymore under the presence of God. And when I'd calmed down a little bit, they said, are you okay? And I realised I still had a broken leg. I hadn't prayed about that. I'd prayed about my ribs. And then I had a very painful trip to the hospital to fix up my broken leg. That was so funny. It was painful at the time. But the mighty deeds of God. God is so wonderful. He is full of power and life. The spirit of counsel and might. When he comes, when he comes, friends, the spirit of might. We should expect to see God to do amazing things when the spirit of might comes. The spirit of knowledge. What is the spirit of knowledge? The, the Greek word is de half. It, it's, it's not just information. We can think, oh, we need a spirit of knowledge and go to the library and go to Google. But it's not information. Jesus said you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. It's not knowledge that is just information. It's revelation from God that brings liberty. It's revelation truth. We have gifts of the Spirit that flow. And God brings those gifts to set people free. We have a word, a little piece of information from God when God will show somebody uh, uh, something about somebody else to help them, to bring healing, to bring a miracle, to bring an answer, to bring the resolution of God. Uh, spirit of knowledge is not about information, friends. It's about bringing the liberty that the Spirit brings. That's what the spirit of knowledge is about. It's revelation. See, when I read my Bible, I can fill this, I can do studies, I can and get my head full of information, but unless I have a spirit of revelation that comes with it, then it's just information, and I can be very intelligent and full of information, but have no life. But when I get the spirit of knowledge that comes with it, the revelation of God that comes with it, then it brings life, it brings liberty, it brings empowerment. God makes a way for what he wants to do on the earth through me when I walk in the spirit of knowledge. That's what we need to do, friends. It's not about just knowing stuff. It's about walking in the revelation of God. Revelation is a big, long word, but really it just means what God reveals to you. It's what God shows you. That's what revelation is. It's simple. Don't make it more complex and difficult than it is. But we need to walk under that life of the Spirit and allow Him to come and fill us with all these aspects so that we can be who He wants us to be on the earth, full of the Spirit, full of life, full of the Spirit of wisdom, full of the Spirit of counsel and might, full of the Spirit of knowledge, full of the Spirit of the Lord. So God can anoint us to walk as Jesus did on the earth. When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, and he will not speak of himself, but what he hears he shall speak, and he will show you things to come. That's the spirit of knowledge, friends. He comes and he shows us things. He shows us what's about to happen. Just as I was speaking about the 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 Spirit of God building like a tropical storm cloud. That's what's going to happen. He shows us things that are going to come that are important to Him, not just stuff for us. We've got to get out of the, the selfishness that gets around about us and allow God to lift us into that bigger realm, into the realm of the Spirit, into what He wants to do, and He will show us. That's the prophetic. It comes from the Spirit of knowledge, the Spirit of revelation, the spirit of liberty. The Bible says that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. That's what God does when he comes. When the spirit of God comes, there is liberty. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. That's the liberty that God wants to bring us into. The, the, the freedom on the inside. You know, when Jesus was on the boat 
and they were crossing a lake and there was a storm and everybody was worried that they were going to sink and drown. Jesus was asleep. He wasn't worried. He wasn't full of anxiety. He wasn't overly concerned. He was enjoying himself to the point where he could sleep in the midst of a storm. So we can only live out of what is inside of us. And when we have the peace on the inside of us, then what is external won't change us and won't rattle us. We've got to have the peace of God that passes understanding. Why does it pass understanding? Because it doesn't make any natural sense. But when you have the peace of God, knowing that you're in the will of God, fulfilling the purpose of God under the Spirit of God, then you can have perfect peace regardless of circumstances that are around about you to the point where your peace can then affect the circumstances around about you just like Jesus did when his disciples shook him and woke him up and he said, where is your faith? And he got up and stood in that boat and said to the storm and to the waves, peace, be still. And it came out of that place of peace on the inside and he spoke and there was peace. And they said, what manner of man is this? He's the manner of man that we should be, friends. People of the Spirit, people who see what God wants to do, people who have that Spirit of God on the inside of us. Friends, when He comes, when He comes, when He comes, friends, He transforms and He changes us. We shouldn't be just looking for the external things that God wants to do, but we should be co-workers with him, putting our hand in his hand, being his hands and feet, being his mouthpiece, being led by the Spirit, walking with him. Friends, when he comes, when he comes, friends, when he comes, the liberty and the life of the Spirit of God is going to come and we are praying for a transformation, a reformation, a change in our nation. And the nations of the world need it at the moment. We need it now more than we ever have. We need the Spirit of God to come in power and life. And the last one is the spirit of the fear of the Lord. The word in the Hebrew is yira, which means fear, terror, respect, reverence. You know, sometimes we get a little bit concerned about this. and We say, why should we have the fear of the Lord? There are so many verses in the Bible that talk about the benefits of, of the fear of the Lord. Let me read a few for you. <clears throat> in Job 28, 28, he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to part from evil is understanding. Psalm 19, verse 9, The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Psalm 111, verse 10, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. His praise endures forever. Proverbs 1 verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Proverbs 8 verse 13. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy, and the evil way, and the froward mouth or the untoward mouth, the, the negative mouth, these things does he hate. Proverbs 9 verse 10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Proverbs 10 27, the fear of the Lord prolongs days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. Proverbs 14 26, in the fear of the Lord is strong confidence and his children shall have a place of refuge. Proverbs 14, 27. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life to depart from the snares of death. Proverbs 15. It goes on and on. There are so many benefits to the fear of the Lord. See, the fear of the Lord is not a bad thing. It comes from a good God. Better is little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure and trouble within. Proverbs 15, 33. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom and before honour is humility. Proverbs 16, verse 6. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged, and by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. Proverbs 19, 23. The fear of the Lord tends to life 
and he that has it shall abide satisfied, he shall not be visited with evil. Proverbs 22 verse 4, By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honour and life. Oh, the fear of the Lord. We need the Spirit of the Lord to come with the fear of the Lord. We need that aspect of God to come. I want to give you a little testimony. I was pastoring a small church, about 30 people, a very small church, women and children mostly, and I was praying for revival. I wanted revival. And really, I, I was just wanting my church to grow. And I was driving my vehicle, and I was praying desperately, God, give me revival. God, I want revival. God, give me revival. And I was beating the steering wheel as I was driving, saying, God, give me, my, give me revival. And then God came into my car. The Bible says that if we pray according to his will, he hears us. God came into my vehicle and sat in the vehicle with me. And friends, when you get before God and you see his holiness, the angels cry in heaven, holy, 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 continually before Lord. And when you see God in his holiness and that, that incredible sense of who he is, then you can understand why they cry day and night, holy, holy, holy. The word holy literally means to be separated, to be separate, set apart. And God, I can tell you, friends, is holy. He is set apart. And when that holy presence came into my car and sat with me, Friends, I was so conscious of his holiness and that I wasn't. It's like, you know, when you're driving into the sun and the strong light of that sun shows up every imperfection on your windscreen, every scratch, every little dirty drop, every finger mark, every smudge. That's what it's like when you're in the presence of a holy God. And that glory of his holiness shines up in every little spot, every little mark in your life is very, very clear in his bright holiness, that searching spotlight of his gaze. And the fear of the Lord came upon me. The spirit of the fear of the Lord and I was, I tell you, I was terrified in the presence of God. My immediate response under that searching gaze was to repent. I repented of my sin. I repented of every sin that I could remember. I repented of every sin that I thought that I might have sinned. I repented of every sin that I thought that I might do. I repented of every negative thought, of every selfish thought. I repented of every little thing that I could think of and I was terrified. Under his holy presence, when the spirit of the fear of the Lord comes, friends, when it comes upon you and you are under that searching gaze of the fear of the Lord, when he comes in his holy presence and you stand before God, there is no getting away. There is no hiding. There is nowhere you can run. There is no getting uh, behind something. There is nothing that you can get away from when you're in his holy presence. And there is nothing that you can hide. There is no lie that you can give because he is the spirit of truth. There is no insecurity that is not hidden from him. There is nothing, friends, when you are in the holy presence and the fear of the Lord comes that can, that can cover anything. And it's so true when the Bible says our righteousness 
is as filthy rags. And you become so very, very conscious of that. I repented, friends, but I am so very, very glad for the blood of Christ. I am so very, very grateful. The Bible says that if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And it is such a powerful thing to have the blood of Christ come as we confess and repent for that cleansing, cleansing, cleansing. And I was like, God had the, the buffer out, getting rid of every little scratch, getting rid of every little piece of flesh, getting rid of every little selfish thought, everything, every little motive that was wrong. He was scrubbing it down deep and getting rid of that. And friends, you only need a taste of the fear of the Lord. And I had a taste of the fear of the Lord, and it has kept me from evil. And it has endured with me. That was many years ago. But it is still so fresh, and I am still in deep, deep reverence and respect towards our awesome God who is full of holiness and who's, who comes, friends, when he comes. Our nation needs the fear of the Lord. Our, our, our people need the fear of the Lord. Our politicians, our lawmakers, our lawgivers, our everybody. We need the fear of the Lord. It is not a bad thing. It's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. And it's the goodness of God that comes when the fear of the Lord comes and leads us to repentance as we have a consciousness and we awaken to the holiness of God. God is about to pour out His Spirit. He has started. And I am believing for the fear of the Lord, even though I am terrified by it, that He will come when He comes, friends. He's going to bring a change. And we need to be able to stand with Him, walk with Him, and allow the blood of Jesus. And you can say, yes, oh yes, we need the fear of the Lord. Well, when you stand under that fear of the Lord, friends, he deals with all our pride. He deals with everything. There is nothing that is hidden under that searching gaze. And we need that gaze to come upon us, to come upon our land, to come upon our nation, and an awakening to God. That is what our nation needs, an awakening to the awesome presence of the Holy One, the Spirit of Lord, the Spirit of knowledge, the Spirit of might, the Spirit of counsel, and of the fear of the Lord. The Spirit of God is so wonderful, friends. I pray that you would taste of everything of who God is, that you would be awakened to Him like never before, that, that where you are would become awakened to God that your workplace, your home, your environment, your family, your friends would become awakened to God. Oh God, I pray that you would move, that you would do all that you are promising and showing us, that you would let that tropical, thunderous, thunderhead of, of the presence of God break forth upon us. God bless you. Have a great day.